All right, so if you went to an HBCU or know someone who did, then you definitely know that homecoming is typically a massive deal. You got the step shows, you got the parades, the concerts, the not so great football games, you name it. So for students at Howard University to ignore their first in-person homecoming in two years and instead continue protesting the school's housing conditions, things have to be serious. For the past 11 days, Howard students have been demonstrating over inexcusable housing conditions like mold, flooding, and mice in dorms. Yikes. Here's one student's viral account of what's been happening on campus. I have friends personally who are out of a, out of a home. Their belongings have been damaged to the point where they can no longer use them or they no longer exist from mold exposure. People who are in the hospital coughing up blood right now because they cannot breathe with what they've been exposed to. Students cannot breathe in these conditions. Look, the vice president of student affairs at Howard said in a statement, the university has been working to expand housing options for students. She also confirmed that some students would face disciplinary action for their role in the protests, which is not the best response. But it's also worth noting, this is not just an issue for the students. It's also an issue about federal policy. Remember, the Build Back Better plan was initially supposed to include $20 billion, $20 billion with a B, for HBCUs and other minority-serving institutions. Now, that number's been dropped to $2 billion. And with Democrats still negotiating, who knows if that number will stay as is. Joining me now is Jackie Reed, an Emmy-winning news anchor and an alum of the renowned HBCU, Clark Atlanta University. Jackie, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure, Juanita. Thank you for having me. So students at Howard have given the school a list of demands, including an in-person town hall with Howard's president, a meeting with school leaders about housing and disciplinary immunity for protesters, as we know they have threatened that against any Divine Nine fraternity or sorority members who show up and participate at these protests and can be identified. Uh, how do you think Howard officials should respond? Because this ain't it. Yeah. I can't believe that Howard University's administration mishandled this based on reporting that I've been privy to. I can't believe that at first students actually wanted to meet with the administration before they started protesting and they had somewhat of a town hall or a meeting and no one from the administration showed up reportedly. And then the protest started and these students have a legitimate gripe. Listen, I know you remember college is hard enough. Who wants to be living in unsafe conditions with mold and mildew and roaches and rodents and things like that to the point if you're someone who has asthma or some other ailment that you could get sick from these things. And at first, the administration wanted to discipline these students that were protesting. But now what I'm hearing is they are changing their tune. They have met with these students. They have toured the dorms. They're talking about making some changes. They're saying that the, the problems that are there are not widespread, and so they're working to make a difference, but still to say that these students will face disciplinary action because they're protesting, they have a right to protest these unsafe conditions. I think Howard administration needs to really rethink this and change their course of action when it comes to dealing with these students and these issues. Yeah, because you're right. Protesting is a very basic right for these students. We know it's a basic right for any citizen in this country. And I think it feeds into the fact that this protest is catching on with students at other HBCUs, including Spelman, Morehouse, and your alma mater, Clark Atlanta, protesting in solidarity. We know that HBCUs typically have smaller endowments than predominantly white institutions. And can you relate to the conditions that Howard students are describing? Like, this sounds like, one, not anything anybody should be paying for that they're experiencing and absolutely not on a college campus. Yeah, I mean, listen, unless Tyler Perry is your papa, going to school is expensive, right? <laughs> is it whether you're going to Harvard or Howard, it is expensive. Who wants to be paying $40,000 plus to go to school and then you've got roaches and mold and mildew. Nobody wants to experience that. But the, the truth is, you know, these schools are important to this country. 
more black doctors have gone to undergraduate school at HBCUs than any other school, you know, and, and beyond that. I mean, it's definitely a positive experience, but it's not like these schools aren't gonna have issues, but they've gotta handle those issues. Clark Atlanta University, my school, at the beginning of this semester, when students came back from summer break and freshmen were coming in to get started in, in August, there were some housing issues there. But immediately, Dr. French, the president there, apologized. You know, the, the kids were in temporary housing because the dorms weren't ready when they were supposed to be. The temporary housing that they put them in was subpar. But instantly, they refunded 50% of the tuition that students paid. They apologized. They took appropriate action um, to me, in my opinion. And I think Howard University could learn a bit from what how CAU handled this. And that's why there's a solidarity. Because listen, when I was in school, it wasn't, you know, roaches and rodents and things like that. But there's a running joke among HBC <laughs> students about how long it takes to register for classes. It takes forever for no reason. But that's because the funding at, H at HBCUs is subpar. I mean, there was a recent study or investi investigation that found that Tennessee State was supposed to receive $500 million in state funding, right? And didn't get it. And this the uh, one state senator who happens to be a Republican said, listen, I don't care if, it, if this investigation is true, they're not getting it. And this happens at so many HBCUs where they are supposed to get federal and state funding that they never get. The top 10 uh, HBCUs for 2020, they had an endowment of maybe $2 billion. The top 10 uh, predominantly white institutions got $200 billion for 2020. It just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense that they are underfunded. So it is, so I give them, you know, some room for error. I give them room for mistakes. It's going to happen. Every school has their problem, but how are you going to handle those problems? And that's where Howard University is making a mistake here. But it does shine a bigger light on the fact that these schools need proper funding. Yes. Yes, and thank you for walking us through that, Jackie Reed. And Howard University officials, if you're listening, you heard it. Own up to your mistakes, start issuing some refunds, and get it together. Jackie Reed, thanks and so much for joining. Don't punish those students. Don't punish the students. <laughs> Do not punish any students. Have a good night, Jackie. Thanks. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.